Number one, what I want to talk about is the number one modification that you should avoid, in my opinion, for the 2018 and up Mustang GT, and that is This message finds you all well and in great spirits. Yes. Well, thank you so much for clicking the video. Please do like and subscribe and watch till the end so you can hear my list of mods to avoid for your 2018 to 2019 Mustang GT. Yes, what I have behind me is not the Black Mama. That is my 2018 Mustang GT. This is a 2018 GT 350R. That's Tunnel Chase's beautiful car. And I have it right now because he's reviewing my new Edge, the Brown Mama. So check out his channel for that review. But what we're doing today, we're going to talk about the modifications about the 2018 and up Ford Mustang. My Black Mamba is not here because it is at Custom Coatings getting ready for a new look to be revealed at the Philadelphia International Auto Show, February 2nd to the 10th. Please do check out the description below for all the details. I'll let you know what day we're going to be there. We'll do the reveal and the podcast and have a whole lot of fun. But I digress. Let's get into the meat of the video. Number one, what I want to talk about is the number one modification that you should avoid, in my opinion, for the 2018 and up Mustang GT, and that is, drum roll please, headers. Yes, I am not a fan of headers uh, for three or four reasons, and I'll, I'll break those down. To, uh, number one, the price. Number two, the install. And number three, the headache. Now, let me break those down further. Number one, the price. Headers are very expensive. They're on the low end of 700 on the low end all the way up to 2000 plus then the headache of the install check out the card above it was crazy install we actually had to remove the motor mounts it was crazy i know there's a lot of people that do it without it it was crazy move the starter the steering wheel it's just a lot of headache and it's a lot of headache for about 20 horsepower guys it's not like the old mustangs where you get a lot of bang for your buck the mustangs that are made now from ford have shorty headers in there they're very well made they're great they're compliant you don't got to worry about the emissions, inspection, they're great. And the way that set up from Ford now, you can't go wrong. So, I wouldn't get headers. Number two, this to speak from personal experience, I ran 11.3 without headers, and then after headers, I ran 11.1. Yes, there are other factors involved, but their performance gain, I don't think is that necessary, unless you're going to power add. If you're going to power add and make a car a drag strip monster, please, go, go through with it. Besides headers, you know, we talked about price with the headers, we talked about install. Talk about the performance gain that's not as dramatic as you think. What I think second is, you want to talk about is suspension. Yes. Uh, I'm not talking about, and let me just, die, let me say this honestly. I'm not talking about lowering springs. We all like to lower our Mustangs. That's fine. What I'm talking about is like bushings. I got diff bushings in my car. <sighs> just doesn't ride the same. Doesn't have that feel, that crisp, nice, quiet cruise control, XM radio, heated steering wheel, heated seats that you love. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's okay to lower the car, you know, but you do have to worry about speed bumps. But the way they're set up from the factory already, this car, I know you want that look, that slam look, whatever, but these cars are so good from the factory, you don't need to worry about things like diff bushings. I'm not against lowering springs. I get it. I understand it. But uh, for my money, I, I think that the way the car is set up uh, suspension wise is pretty good unless you're gonna go straight crazy performance you're a track guy you're a drag strip guy I get it but for the normal consumer that wants to do a couple mods like maybe you just want to do something simple you're like okay I just want to get um, lowering springs and I think that's where you should end it I mean as far as when you get into uh, changing the bushings and stuff you're gonna lose daily ability drivability the cars gonna make noises you don't like and that leads me to my number three. So, number one, I said, in my opinion now, this is my opinion, I don't think you need headers. I don't think you need bushings. Number three, I don't think you need a one-piece drive shaft. Yes, I do have a one-piece drive shaft in the Mustang. The only time you need a one-piece drive shaft is if you're going to go full power adder and you're going full on seven, 800, 1,000 horsepower car. You need that for safety reasons. But a one-piece drive shaft from Ford is sufficient, especially if you're going NA. Um, if you want to go straight NA, you can get the one-piece, but I think the sacrifice in the sound is like a whining noise. To me, it's annoying. I mean, I'm sorry. I just don't like it. I know they're really cool. They save weight. It's good for the quarter mile, but for daily driving ability, you don't need it. You don't need... So let's recap the top three. 
I think you don't need, and this is my humble opinion, uh, number, you don't need headers. They're great from the factory. I wouldn't change, springs are okay, but I wouldn't change out things like bushings and things of that nature, because then the car starts to drive really weird, even on the highway, it's not that great. Uh, number three, I might have said number three again, I don't recommend a one-piece drive shaft unless you're going for power adding. Like, that's when you, the things change and you think about safety and things of that nature. Number four, you don't need a catch can. Now, relax. I know there's two types of catch cans. I don't think you need a driver's side catch can. A passenger is sufficient. The driver's side is placebo effect. It looks cool under the hood. You don't need it. And of course, you know, the debate goes on. These companies don't add catch cans from the factory, so what's the difference? I know, that's a whole nother video. So, and then number, I would say this is number five. Uh, number five, I don't recommend rims, no. I don't recommend wheels, no. What size? I don't recommend 20s. That's right. The rims that I think are perfect for a Mustang are 19s. 19s are the right size, the right blend of everything. 20s look great. They don't drive great. And the tire wall is smaller. The ride is harsher. It's noisier. You know, one of the things are that the debate is these modifications like bigger these modifications like bigger rims, they look phenomenal, but they don't drive as phenomenal as they look. That's why the, there's 19s on there. Now I know that some super performance cars, like I think the Shelby GT500 has 20s on there. That's because it's engineered for it. It has the bigger brakes, it has the bigger rotors, the suspension's upgraded. But for your Mustang GT, I don't think 20s are a good, good choice because you'll lose all that ability. So. Thanks for hanging on this far. I'll give a quick recap once again. I hope you like all the crazy cr camera angles that we're trying to give you with just me walking around the car. But here are the angles, right? This is the number one. Number one, you don't need headers. They're good enough from the factory. Number two, when you get suspension upgrades, stay away from diff bushings. Stay away from bushings. They make the car drive like poop. Number three, do not get a one-piece drive shaft unless you're ready for noise or unless you're going to power add the car or you're going to go straight drag stripping for NA build. Number four, you don't need a catch can. Driver size is, is you don't need a placebo. Passenger is good. And number five, don't go for 20s. Not on the GT. I know some cars have it, but you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna sacrifice performance and your, your sidewall is going to be smaller. Let me know, comment below, please debate me. I know this is controversial. Some people might love it, some people might hate it. Let me know what your list is. If you have a 2018 or any Mustang, you say, you know what? That's a modification I did and I kind of regret it. And that's okay, because that happens. You live and you learn. But I feel like this is my list. I had this beautiful R behind me, because again, the Black Mamba's not here. But just driving this stock R, this is completely carbon fiber wheels, crazy dialed in suspension he calls it a stripper because it has no air conditioning it drives phenomenal it drives smooth it's quiet it's compliant it passes emissions ah that's why it's kind of something that i wanted to touch base with is that sometimes you can modify your car to where it's not fun anymore where it doesn't it sacrifices so it's okay to demodify now you're probably wondering oh a stang motor you have the one-piece drive shaft and you have the diff bushings and you have the 20s and you have the headers yes i do have it because the reason it's going to harmonize into the build we're trying to do, which is a drag strip build. We want to get there. We want to go straight line performance, but it comes at a sacrifice. And that sacrifice is the fact that we lose the drivability. We lose the easiness of it. Um, so, I mean, when I go to the drag strip, I got the car too. So that's another thing to consider. But this is my experience, guys. Let me know. Comment below. I really appreciate your support. We're growing fast. We're getting there. Let me know if you like this kind of content. This is just my opinion. This is my list. This is my experience. Let me know what yours is. And I please appreciate if you like and subscribe. As you guys know, it never ends.